Welcome to Season 7 of Sea of Thieves, a cute little update allowing you to own and decorate your own ships to your heart's content. Or at least so I thought. What was meant to be a standard day of Reaper emissary shenanigans somehow ended with us being hunted by what felt like the entire server. And a swift glance at the patch notes would reveal why. Several changes have been made to how PvP works in this game, a lot of which was meant to make life easier for solo players, but others affect everyone engaging in PvP. There's a lot to be said about these balance updates, and we will get to that, but even in light of these changes, I was not prepared for the absolute onslaught of PvP waiting for me during the Season 7 launch. But just like with any good story, it only makes sense to start at the beginning. Much like for many of you, our first session of Season 7 began with us buying our very own ship. Birdie will be our captain for today, setting sail on a brand new vessel. One of the privileges you get when sailing under a captain is buying supplies from the shipwright in addition to the ones from the Merchant Alliance, allowing us to start off our day with our barrels filled to the brim. What we didn't expect, however, was that the Pirate Lord ended up being surprisingly chatty, and our captain was not having any of it. That's really cool, but have you seen my parrot named Based? By the power of Flameheart, I, I expel thee. You're not going away, bro. There he goes. Get off my ship. Yeah, we couldn't wait to get away from the outpost and pipe proxy this tutorial. Though naturally, we had no intention to start our journey until the ship was sufficiently decorated. Opting for a fittingly edgy appearance to match our plans for the day, we were more than ready to get this show on the road. Our first course of action was naturally to level up our emissary flag. A conveniently located Ashen Winds event would give us a nice little head start towards that process, which I was left to complete on my own while the two of them left to complete a captain's voyage. Captain's voyages are a mix of different standards voyages, with a big benefit of being sold in bulk. Birdie had opted for a mercenary voyage, which had us complete a Vault, Phantom Fleet, and Lost Shipment. Now, I have completed many an Ashen Winds event by now, and I've gotten exceedingly good at it, even when the server felt a bit rubber bandy. So good, in fact, that I was done with my part of the job before my crew was even halfway done with a single quest. I was a bit sussy over what they just spent the last 15 minutes doing, but when we began loading up the treasure, I started getting a picture. Friend, you don't have to... Watch over the loot that's I'm pulling it. I'm just chilling. Yeah, why? <laughs> you can help! You only need one person to help grab. Okay, um, I need the captain to do this. Like, it's not my place to be berating you. Brandon, get the f on the ship. Stop dicking around. Yeah, somehow I got the feeling that we had a bit of a motivation issue. It is worth mentioning that usually when we decide to run the Reaper Emissary flag, we rarely get bothered by anyone. And the same seemed to hold true for that day. We went on to check off a variety of different quests on the way to complete our voyage, and just like any other day, everybody seemed to be keeping their distance from us. And that was just as well, because Season 7 introduced a new form of progression in the form of milestones, which we were very keen to make progress on. But just as we were about to check off the second out of three quests on our way to that goal, with our flag having since been upgraded to rank 5, things began going horribly wrong. Come back. Oh, are we already fighting? Holy... Oh, both of our masks are dropped? That's horrible. Uh, bucket, bucket, bucket! I'm dead, but I anchored them. Right behind us? That doesn't I... help us right now. Okay, well, the mask is down again. I'm black screen right now. I need some help here. We're sinking. I'm, I'm black screen. I'm here. Getting knocked around. God damn it! Well, there's the blundies. Our complacency was our downfall. Nobody was checking the horizon, and with all three of us underwater to grab the loot, that brigantine had found the perfect opportunity to strike. There was absolutely no coordination on our side, and with a constant bombardment of cannon fire coming our way, no chance to take a breath either. Once these guys began boarding us, our fate was sealed. The ship was gone, and with it, everything we had worked towards so far. A desperate last-ditch effort to take them down with us was foiled, putting us back at zero. Needless to say, that morale was at an all-time low after such such a striking defeat. Blame was being thrown around any which way, and we knew that there was only one way to lift our spirits. Revenge. Losing a fight has been and always will be a frustrating thing to deal with, but nothing is more frustrating than knowing it's your fault that you lost. As much as the three of us were mad at each other, we agreed on one thing. We can and we will get our stuff back. They're coming in hot. Yeah, I know. Adjust the sails. I think they're gonna try to sail past us. They missed. That's one. Race front, race front. Wait, I need to get this damage in. Yeah, I'm raising front, we're in a left turn. Uh oh. Shit. Okay. I got I it. it. I got the repair. Uh, on board. Oh, what? 
Like a blundy snipe like crazy? Yeah, something was definitely amiss here. Getting sniped with a blundy from that distance definitely didn't feel great. But when a cannonball phased through our ship to one-shot me with no splash damage when I was nowhere near it, I knew that something was off. That rubber banding nonsense at the Ashen Winds event was obviously not an isolated incident. Our server must have been struggling with a load of countless pirates trying out their new update, making this fight a bit of a pain. Despite these weird hiccups, we kept our composure in the face of what was becoming a very impatient crew. These guys must have been dying to end this encounter so they could sell the loot, but unfortunately for them, there was only one thing we could help with, which is the dying part. A full wipe after that ramming play meant that even with the 15 second respawn timer, these guys would not have a chance to save their vessel. Seeing our loot come back up was very satisfying indeed, but just like we did before, their crew decided to fight to their last breath, even if said breath would be taken underwater. And at last, I too would benefit from server instability as my Wi-Fi blade dealt the final blow. The second one was a bit more feisty, no doubt he was a good shot, but thankfully all that karma was being paid back in spades, with Rare sending a shark to my aid. This was a win we definitely needed, more because of our egos than our wallets, but little did we know at the time that this was not the last fight we'd find ourselves in. But that was a problem for future Cliff. For the time being, we relished in our victory as we inspected the logbooks that we fished out of the water. Small Boat OP. What? They sank a boat called Small Boat OP. And that boat had done absolutely nothing. So they probably just sank an AFK player. Oh, you're reading the other log. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I am. These logbooks are definitely a fun addition to Captain C. It seemed like the Brigantine just hopped on the server specifically because they saw an opportunity to take us out, since no quests had been attributed to them. If that's the case, then there was a decent chance they'd come back for a rematch, giving us ever the more reason to supply up at the nearest outpost. But even though we won the fight, we still had to level up a new emissary flag. There was another Ashen Winds event off in the distance, and even though there was a ship on the way, since it wasn't an emissary, we really didn't have any reason to attack them. A decision we would come to regret later. But fate continued to present to us the middle finger, not only by despawning Ashen Winds, but also... What the? Fort of Fortune? Fort Fortune. Oh. The game heard. Oh, I think the Ashen Winds despawned. If we're gonna do this, we need Disney sticks. I'm not doing this without Disney sticks. Unfortunately for us, that Fort of Fortune was the only world event worth doing at the time, and as such, the best way to get our emissary flag back to rank 5. To make it easier, we traveled north to the treasury of the secret wilds so that we could stock up on some tridents, aka Disney sticks. By the way, did you know that some of the milestones they added in Season 7 literally tell you not to play the video game? Stuff like, oh, I don't know, sleeping for 60 minutes? Well, well, with us having quite the ways to go, we decided to indulge in some of these activities. Alright. I gotta farm my uh, music plane. I'll farm my sitting. What are you farming, Birdie? Decorations, baby! Ship behind us, ship right behind us, ship behind us, I'm dropping okay, sails. Okay. The A? Question mark? No, it's a regular sloop. Yo, double style. board, double board, Brandon, let's go. Boy, howdy, we were a hair away from making the same mistake twice. Thankfully, this time we managed to take control of the fight before it went out of hand. But let me tell you, that 15 second respawn timer truly makes it feel like you gotta complete some sort of horde mode before being allowed to sink a ship. Since the last update, you can no longer get revived on an enemy ship. Wasn't it for Brandon backing me up? Chances are I would not have survived more than a minute. But now that these guys were defeated, surely we could go and level up our flag by completing that Fort of Fortune as soon as we supplied back up, right? Ha! Huh. Wrong. So There's a sloop coming again? Are you trolling me? Brother, okay, get battle stations. I'm coming. Okay, this was beginning to get ridiculous. These people were acting like we're the only ship on the server that had loot. Thankfully, we've been starting to get this boarding stuff down to a science, and we kinda had to. This sloop's mast has been buffed to where chain shots only deal two cracks worth of damage, meaning you need another shot to take it down. If we hadn't immediately boarded them, chances are we'd have to waste a bunch of chains. But you know what's the worst part about all this PvP? coming our way? None of these people had any loot! So we still couldn't level up our emissary flag! Okay, cool. Grab some Disney sticks from the treasury, take out a Megalodon on the way, start clearing the Fort of Fortune just for another ship to roll up. Of course we go and take the fight just for their crew to zip around on what felt like 800 MS but was probably due to server instability. Ten minutes pass, we finally take down the ship. Naturally, they don't have any loot on board because why would they? Actually, they did have one item on board now that I think about it. Oh yeah, there's stuff in the water. Yeah. Oh. A gunpowder barrel. But we don't even get a minute to ourselves because they immediately raise the Reaper emissary flag again just to come right back towards us. Or at least so we thought. Is that a galley? Oh no. No shot. Right well, here. boys, are you ready for this? Barely. I'm blundering them. Front mast is down. Ours. So is theirs. Their back mast is down. 
Uh, one is coming for the board. I'm off. I'm off. I'm dead. This is it. I'm back on. Okay. Well, no matter the PvP changes, one thing will always hold true in Sea of Thieves. More pirates equals more better. Player skill be equal, bigger ships will still defeat smaller ones more often than not. None of this loot buff stopped us from sinking every single one of them, and much in that same way, we got absolutely rolled by that galleon. Props to them, by the way, they didn't just have the numbers, but also the skill. After four hours of what felt like non-stop PvP, we did want to go back for a rematch, but ultimately decided against it just due to sheer exhaustion. But hey, if you can't get enough of PvP or watching me fail miserably, then what about you check out my episode titled Life of a Solo Slooper? I feel like a lot of you are gonna find that one relatable, the character which you can find on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace.